So here we are back with Nancy Drew, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. Um, I'm going to give myself an hour or so today um, to see how we're progressing. As I've said before, this is not my favorite game. Um, I've only ever played two, so this is my second one. But here I feel that the whole sleuthing and putting, piecing things together is kind of not really happening. It's all about going somewhere, fetching something, which is fine if you do it once or twice, but then if you have to hunt bugs for several days and the only thing that you do is basically go to sleep. Um, you know, uh, and I don't really know what to do now. We found the safe, um, but we can't tell anyone about it. Um, so let's see. Um, it's during the day. So um, I did look up some things on the internet and basically it seems like you just go to sleep and then wake up again and then you talk to different people um, and you know after after a while there will be changes in what they tell you which you know I don't really understand how we can now that we found the um, the uh, safe in the basement now that we found the basement there's a secret door to the basement and we found a, a safe there we we rang Sally and we can't tell her about it I find that really difficult to believe so let's just uh, see if the guy is there. Or maybe we find something up here. Um, no, he's gone. And also the cans of gas are gone. So let's just uh, take the boat and go to people. And maybe we find a new dialogue option. Because speaking to the uh, to the owner of the house and you know didn't really do what I wanted it to do. Because I hoped that I'd be able to uh, tell her about the safe. But I wasn't able to. And then we'll go to sleep and then we'll do it all over again. So let's go to uh, the Moon Lake State Ranger station. Let's see if the... Is Yogi there? Yogi is there. Hello. Hmm. You're back. Ah! I found this old picture in Sally's house. Do you know who these people are? The man is Mickey Malone, I know that. I'm guessing that this is his girlfriend, Vivian Burnett, I think her name was. And judging by the year of that brand new Ford in the background, I'd say the picture was taken in 1928. She was probably as familiar with Malone's house and his dogs as he was. Think there's any chance she's still alive? Tell you what, Miss Drew. Why don't I go through my files and see what I can dig up on this mystery woman? I'm a busy man, but like I always say, I'm here to serve. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. Okay, so obviously that was something that was unexpected because I wouldn't have expected him to know these people in the picture because he certainly wasn't around, but... Uh, this is one of the games where you basically just have to talk to people all the time and then just hope for the best. So let's see what M from M's Emporium has to say on the matter. Watch me go! Nyr, nyr. How you holding up? Guess I'll see you later. You betcha. So I, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, um, just think of all the, um, all the, uh, petrol I've been using, just driving around. Let's see if we can now go inside from the outside because we did go in there previously. Yup, we can. Oh, I think I may have checked that last time. Okay. Um, so it means that anyone can... Oh, well, we couldn't lock the doors anyway. We found that out earlier. So, okay. So let's just, I suppose, go to sleep. Yep, 
Let's sleep until the PM and then talk to Red Knot again if he's there. Yep. Oh, the cans are there again. Howdy. See you in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess not. Good news! I have information on your mystery woman. Thank you so much! Is she still alive? Her name these days is Vivian Whitmore. She lives in Las Vegas and her number is 702-555-9137. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Now, let's take a look at the personal data assistant because we have noticed that it's, she sometimes comes up with ideas that are in there then, but nobody has told her. And if you don't take recourse to this resource, then you may not find out about it. Okay, ask Jeff Akers if he found out. Okay, open safe and seller. How? Find out the woman in the picture with Malone is ah there you are she actually asked herself should she look uh, should she talk to to acres i would never have thought so so she basically in i mean it would have made sense if they'd voiced this because i for one really 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 don't um look at this thing often enough so let's call miss whitmore one seven oh two Five, 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 nine, one. She must be close to 100 years old. If you're selling something, hang up right now. I got an air horn in my hand that could deafen a dinosaur, and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, no, no, please. I'm not selling anything. Believe me. Is this Vivian Whitmore? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You got exactly five seconds to state your business. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Moon Lake, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to ask you some questions. All right. The Moon Lake Park Ranger said you might call, but you have to talk fast. An old friend of mine is flying in today from Florida. And when I say old, I mean old, as in five years older than I am. Don't bother trying to do the math, sweet stuff. You'll hurt yourself. So... That ranger fella said you found an old picture of me. That's right. I found it in the cellar of Mickey Malone's old house on Moon Lake. Moon Lake. Talk about your fond memories. I had a lot of fun there. 
Although I wasn't anywhere near as wild as most young people were back then. That's what but they all say. Mickey kind of respected me for that. I was his gal for five years. He always kept birch beer on tap at that speakeasy of his just for me. He had a speakeasy? Where? It was in the basement, right there at Moon Lake. Feds never knew about it, but everybody who was anybody on the East Coast back then, actors, musicians, bankers, politicians, they knew. You weren't big time unless you'd made at least one trip to Moon Lake Mickey's. That's weird. I'm staying in his old house on Moon Lake, and I haven't seen any sign of a speakeasy. Course you haven't. You're not supposed to. Only Mickey and Willie knew how to get into the speakeasy from the house. The rest of us had to go in and out the regular way, through the cemetery. The cemetery? There was a lock hidden in one of the tombstones in that little cemetery behind the house. You needed a key to unlock it, and when you did, stairs would appear that led to the speakeasy. Do you have any idea how to get into Malone's speakeasy from the house? I sure don't. That saloon was built using two main ingredients, concrete and secrecy. Mickey always bragged that nobody could get in unless he wanted them in, and I do believe he was right. But I'll tell you what, if you sent me that picture of me and Mickey, I'll send you my key. The key to the tombstone? You still have it? It's in the bottom of my jewelry box. I've come this close to throwing it out a hundred times, but it's so small and the memories it brings back are so big, well, I just couldn't. As a joke, Mickey had a tombstone made with the name of this federal agent who had it out for him inscribed on it. That's the one the key unlocks. Do you know anything about the safe that's in the cellar of his house at Moon Lake? You must be talking about the wall safe. That was Willie's. By Willie, I mean William Akers, one of the guys who worked for Mickey. Hmm. Mr. Akers... Ranger Acres, I should say. Father. I don't suppose you happen to know the combination. No one knew the combination, not even Mickey. Mostly because Willie was constantly changing it. He was a little paranoid and superstitious. Well, as I recall, he picked the most unlucky number he could think of and used that for the combination. He called it a reverse jinx. That's weird. Unlucky number? Like what? Oh, like the date that something bad happened. Like when the stock market crashed, or when somebody died, or the address of a house that caught fire, or the phone number of the police, that sort of thing. Okay. So, I guess what we're going to do is... It's been fun talking to you. Anytime. We're going to go ho uh, home. We're going to go to Ranger Acres, and we're going we're gonna to post out the picture to Viv. Then we're going to wait a couple of days because it's going to take a while for the U.S. Postal Service to deliver our package to Las Vegas and then for her to return um, the, the key to, to us or to give the key to us, uh, especially since she's got this really old friend with her. So that might take a while because I, get, I bet these two are going to be super, super busy, um, you know, getting drunk and stuff yes Gog is there hello again Miss Drew am I in for another interrogation how much would it cost to send this photo to Vivian Burnett as always I'm here to serve Miss Drew just give it to me and I'll take care of it I'm sure she'll be very pleased to get this back thanks for all your help always a pleasure that's weird because he doesn't even charge us and I'm pretty sure that the postal services do charge. <sighs> okay.
let's just uh, check out PDA. Now, um, this, this question of an unlucky number. It could be that it is the date when Mickey Malone was, um, was arrested. So, let's go back and check. That was in the... That was in the in the Roman numerals cabinet thingy that we um, basically uh, checked out, wasn't it? There was a news paper clipping. And we're looking at 1928. No, she was his girl for five years, so that's possibly this year here. Yep. So that would be 129. January 29th. 129, La, here we are. Black Tuesday, 19th, 14th September, hotel fire. Uncle Clayton died. Mickey Malone pinched. So it's always one, two, three, four, five, six digits. One, two, nine, one, nine. So that would be the 29th of October So it would be zero one two nine thirty two. Let's try this. It's blocked. It's blocked. 
It looks like a tiny hole. It looks like it looks like a tiny hole. It looks like a tiny hole. What's the combination? Zero, one, two, nine, three, Zero. Okay. Okay. Does this turn in different directions? It does. Okay, so zero, one, twenty. Nine, thirty, two. Okay. Um. Then let's try this differently. Let's go b by the European way, which I don't think is correct. Two. Nine. Zero. One. Thirty. Two. Okay, now all of these work. So basically, you have month 08, 23 day, 26 year, 10 month 29, 29, um, 14th street. That's the only one that doesn't work because it's got 97, 30, 14. It would be 2000, it, it would be 1914, 30th of the. 97th month. This one is the only one that doesn't work, but the next one again works. It's November 1730. Uncle Clayton died. Now, if we spell it out like this, it would be 01 29 32. 01 I remember that in old films when they use those dial safes, it's always about right, left. So one to the right, to the two to the left. So if we say that this is the same safe, and if it's already in zero position, and the first one would be zero. So if we say we need to dial right, that would be to the right. So one.
zero one two left nine three two okay that didn't work hmm. okay Yes, zero one two nine thirty two. Hmm. Let's turn left, zero one. Thirty two. It's not it. Hmm. Okay, zero, one, two, nine, thirty, Maybe we have to tell it now we're starting. Zero. One. Twenty. Nine. Thirty. Two. No. Hmm. Maybe we have to turn it to the zero completely. So let's go zero right. Zero. Then one to the left. Three, 
two. Okay. Two, uh, zero to the left. Zero. Uh, let's try this one more time. Zero to the left. Zero. One. Two. Nine. Three. Two. Okay. Hmm. Oh, maybe zero. One, two, nine, three, two. Ha ha! Oh, that's them mice. I bet those were deer mice. I totally agree, honey. William Akers? I wonder if he's related to Jeff Akers. Mm hmm Speakeasy. April 29th, 1933. Today Mickey went to prison, but when they were walking him to the pad paddy wagon, he told me to take care of his dogs, and when the time came to do, to do their tombstones like he told me. Then he whispered to me to look under the Victor Victorola in the speakeasy at Moon Lake. What's a Victorola? He said I'd find a map to the gold he stole two years ago. Then he, they shoved him into the wagon and that was that. Poor Mickey. How's a guy who never spent one night in jail supposed to spend eight years in prison? He'll never make it. I think he wants me to have the gold because deep down he knows he's never coming home. Anyway. I looked under the Victorola and found the map. The problem is there's nothing on it except a bunch of lines and the words the dogs will lead the way. There's no X marking the spot or directions or nothing. But I need the money. Bad. My wife and baby haven't had anything decent to eat in months, so I'm going to pack them up and move to Moon Lake permanently so I can spend all my time looking for the gold. To be quite honest, it has to be the grandfather because otherwise this, uh, he, d d this, this, um, this ranger would be 80. May, na May 4th, 1933. Mickey never told me outright that he was the guy who pulled off the hole-in-the-floor gold heist. He always said the less I knew, the healthier I'd stay. But according to the papers, a bunch of gold was stolen off a moving train right under the noses of about a dozen Pinkertons. Mickey must have greased somebody's palm real good and got him to cut a hole in the floor of the boxcar that the gold was going to be shipped in. After the gold was looked... Uh, was loaded. One of his boys crawled under the train and pulled himself into the boxcar. Then, when the train was moving, he dropped the gold down the hole onto the tracks. Mickey's boys picked it up and got away clean. Nobody ever suspected Mickey was behind it, so what I'm looking for is 20 gold bars. The papers said altogether they weighed around 600 pounds. The question is, did Mickey hide them in one place or did he spread them around? He must have buried them, but where? I just thought of something. Maybe Mickey trained his dogs to go to the gold if you say the right word. I'm going to try saying gold to them tomorrow and see what happens. July 14th, 1933. I've said every word I can think of to all the dogs, but they haven't led me anywhere except around in circles. I spent the last month following them around. First Xander, then Vitus, then Lucy. I don't have to follow Iggy because all he does is sleep on the porch. Maybe have you checked under the porch? So it looks like I'm going to have to start digging. I'll dig under the po under the porch first, seeing as that's where Iggy always is. October 9 21, 1933. A month ago, I started working as a handyman over in Lewiston, Lewistown. 
to make ends meet, so even though to st I stop by Mickey's every day to feed the dogs, I can only look for the gold at night. I dug all around under the porch, but didn't find nothing. I marked the porch on the map. Joe Akers? Emily said Jeff Akers' father was named Joe. Maybe Jeff is related to William Akers after all. Uh, hello? What page are you on? Because I already got that. Um, on the map with a big eye for Iggy because that's the place he always leads me to. I was so busy digging last Tuesday night that I almost wasn't there when my son was born. We are calling him Joe. His big sister is real happy. She says, baby Joe is just like the dolly she's always wanted, but we could never afford to get her. Truth is, we can't really afford Joe either. <laughs> Neither. I keep writing to Mickey, asking him to please tell me straight out where the gold is, but he never writes back. I'll just have to keep digging. Leavenworth Prison, Leavenworth 48, Kansas. September 9th, 1935. So I spent all my free time digging in the woods. I dig around everything that I could. There could be a landmark. Logs, rocks, trees, stumps. But I never find nothing. Plus, I keep getting lost. Oh, yeah. The parts look so much alike, especially at night, that I spend most of my time trying to figure out where I am. So last Sunday, I memorized the way to the cemetery. It's L R R L L R R L R L L R L L R R L R R L. Yeah, we already got that. February 11th, 1939. Even though Mickey never allowed the dogs in the speakeasy or the tunnels, I've been looking there for the gold because I looked everywhere else I can think of and got nowhere. Last week, I found out that Mickey changed the passcode to the spigots in the speakeasy. This got my hopes up because... The way I figured it, why would Mickey change the code without telling me unless he was hiding something? But when I finally figured out the new code, I didn't find nothing in the tunnel that opened up that wasn't there before. Ma why Mickey spent all that money on pictures of those dogs of his, I'll never understand. I give up. Mickey's dead. March 2nd, 1942. And so are all his dogs. I'll never find the gold. I got a good job offer over in Harrisburg and I'm going to take it. Little Joe and Sarah deserve a better life than they've gotten so far. And it's high time Callie got a nice house and a husband who doesn't spend all his time chasing after something he can't find. But I'm leaving this journal here because who knows, maybe someday I'll suddenly remember something that Mickey said and it'll finally hit me where he hid the gold. Maybe I'll come back here and find it after all. But in the meantime, I got my family. They're what's important. They're treasure enough. The dogs will lead the way. I wonder what that means. Thoughts, Philadelphia Gazette, October 9th, 1927. Thoughts on Thuggery by Ethan Collier. The truth about Mickey Malone, as told by his most trusted employee, William Akers. Mr. Malone has never spent a night in jail and he never will, said William Akers. And you know why? Because he's just an ordinary Joe trying to run an, uh, an ordinary business. He said this with such conviction that for a moment this reporter honestly thought Akers was talking about somebody other than Mickey Malone, the notorious gangster. But I was standing on the porch of Malone's getaway home at Moon Lake, having bushwhacked through thick brush from the east side of the lake to avoid detective detection and pro probable eviction by his bodyguards. And hey, I was reading that and I was talking to the man according to the police who, according to the police, is the only person Malone trusts. I ought to know. I see him every day, Akers went on. He doesn't deserve all the grief you newspaper hacks give him. He's a rich man because his landro laundromats are fine establishments and people like to wash their clothes there. All this talk about him being a bootlegger is just plain hogwash. 
When I asked if I could talk to Malone, Akers said Malone was out walking. Like I said, he's an ordinary guy who likes to do ordinary things. When I asked if I could wait for him, he said, What for? Anything you want to know from Mickey Malone, I can tell you. I've worked for him for 15 years. When I said all that I was, all I wanted was the truth, he said, Then you're in luck because that's what I just told you. That's what I call a loyal employee. And now I suggest you leave. Mickey's a well, a swell guy, but he's got these four big dogs, see? And sometimes they don't mind so good. I took the hint and left, but as I struggled through the brush to get back to my car, I realized something. Akers hadn't told me the truth about what Mickey Malone did. I knew that, but he had told me an important truth when it came to what a Mickey Malone was. Mickey Malone was someone who had at least one extremely loyal employee. That's what I said. I ask you, good citizens of Philadelphia, how many so-called legitimate businessmen can say the same thing? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Let's go to sleep. Package just arrived for you from Las Vegas. Yay! Nancy Drew. Great! Vivian sent me the key. I'll dispose of the package. Okay, guess. Wouldn't want to break any littering laws, would we? I found a newspaper dating back to 1927 in Sally's house. Since you're kind of an expert on the history of Moon Lake, do you mind if I ask you some questions about Mickey Malone? Not at all. The article mentioned that a man named William Akers used to work for Malone. Is he a relative of yours? No. Quite a coincidence, I'll admit, but no. I am in no way related to the head flunky of some two-bit gangster and his gang of thugs. Uh, which means that he's totally related to that man. What can you tell me about the gold that Malone supposedly buried on his property? As far as I know, it doesn't exist. It's just one of those rumors people want to believe, so they do. Thanks for all your help. Always oh. a pleasure. Okay, so here's what's happening. This guy is actually the grandson of this Acres person. He's trying to find the gold, and that's why he's trying to scare everybody off the property.
Well, it did open something. I could hear something. Let's see what Viv says. Is this Vivian? No, this is Eustacia Andropov. <laughs> Vivian's fixing snacks in the kitchen. Oh my gosh, Eustacia Andropov? Harry Houdini's cousin? Use the air horn like I showed you! No, Eustacia, wait! It's Nancy Drew. I talked to you on the phone a couple of months ago, just after a friend of mine was kidnapped in St. Louis. I asked you questions about the theater where the kidnapping took place, the Royal Palladium, remember? Nancy Drew, the Snoopy one. You are not dead yet? Uh, no. Most people, I talk to them one day, next day they're dead. It is an old age thing. Oh, stop being so morbid here. Have some clam dip. Hello? Nancy? So you know Eustacia, huh? Small world. Well, what's up? I got the key you sent me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. There's just one thing. It doesn't seem to work. Oh, where is my brain? The key unlocks the letters of the inscription. Just dial in the password and you'll be set. There's just one more thing. Oh, uh, you don't know the password. I'm sorry. You station, I've been playing Canasta all day, and I guess beating her all those times took more out of my brain than I thought. Next game, I win. Next game, lose a pace for pizza. Well, get out your wallet, sister, because you're going down. So, where were we? Oh, yeah, the password, the password. Let's see. It was the name of that federal agent, his first name. Waldo? No, 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 not his real first name. Oh, what? Mickey was always calling him Baldo. That was it, Baldo. I always thought it was mean to call him that, especially since Mickey was starting to get a little sparse on top himself. So I just turn the letters until they spell Baldo? Yes, dear, but like almost everything else in life, it's trickier than it sounds. William Akers, the guy you call Willie. He wrote about looking for the gold that Malone had supposedly buried on his property at Moon Lake. Do you know anything about that? The hole in the floor gold heist. Well, I'll be darned. That was the name Acres used, too. What else can you tell me? Truth be told, when Mickey told me he was the one who pulled off that heist and that he'd buried 20 gold bars at Moon Lake, I didn't believe him. I thought he was making it up. See, Mickey and I were on the outs by then. I thought he was just trying to entice me to come back. But if he told Willie the same thing, maybe there's something to the story after all. Do you have any idea where he might have hidden it? Afraid not. 
Mickey was so secretive that the men who completed his house at Moon Lake were not only forbidden to talk about the work they'd done, but they were ordered to leave the state for good or else. But you know, I think he mentioned a map. Yes. He said he was making a treasure map and that... The dogs. Something about those dogs of his. The dogs will lead the way? He was always saying that. In fact, I'm pretty sure he had it engraved on his tombstone. Think, Viv, think. He said he was making a treasure map and that he was also having paintings done of each dog. He made it sound like one thing had something to do with the other, like he was giving me some big important clue. But I just figured he was playing games, trying to lure me back with mystery and intrigue. I told him to buzz off. Maybe I shouldn't have. Did he say what he was going to do with the paintings? He said he was going to hang them in the speakeasy, and I'm sure that's precisely what he did. Are there any other tricks to getting into the speakeasy that I should know about? <sighs> I suppose it's only fair to warn you about the tunnels, and the doors, and the dead ends. Tunnels? You mean there's more than one way to get to the speakeasy from the cemetery? Mickey had his men dig a bunch of tunnels between the speakeasy and the cemetery with hidden doors that opened when other doors closed and lots of dead ends so that if the speakeasy was ever raided, his guests could hide from the police. I was always terrified of getting lost, but you're a plucky girl. I'm sure you'll be fine. Can you remember anything about Malone's dogs that might suggest where he hid the gold? I stayed away from his dogs. They made me nervous, always jumping around, barking at this or that. The only one I liked was, uh, oh, what was his name? Iggy. I liked Iggy because he was nice and quiet. He just lay on the porch all day and didn't make a peep. It's been fun talking to you. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're looking to change the combination to Baldo. And then we have to take a look at the pictures of the dogs. Let's check when Iggy was born. What was the... Iggy was born... Iggy was born in November. Yeah. Okay, so um, we've we've made some progress today. I would say it's been an hour almost of playtime. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it a day and then continue some other time, possibly Friday. What? Oh my god, I just loaded, didn't I? Oh. Okay. Ugh. That's what happens when you... Oh my god, we have to do it all over again. So, uh...
You're back. I found this old picture in Sally's house. Do you know who these people are? The man is Mickey Malone. I know that. I'm guessing that this is his girlfriend, Vivian Burnett, I think her name was. And judging by the year of that brand new Ford in the background, I'd say the picture was taken in 1928. She was probably as familiar with Malone's house and his dogs as he was. Think there's any chance she's still alive? Tell you what, Miss Drew. Why don't I go through my files and see what I can dig up on this mystery woman? I'm a busy man, but like I always say, I'm here to serve. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem.